Hi everyone again, so let's start off with our laser setup. So now we have our projection, I think let's just close down this window uh, to begin with. So window 1, I'm just going to go to the close button and close it. And then we're going to set up our um, laser. Now there are four, well as far as I'm aware, there are four laser controllers currently supported in Touch Designer. We have uh, the Ether Dream, the Helios, uh, the AVB devices, and uh, we also have the Beyond Chop, which allows you to use Pangolins Beyond in the FB4. Um, so, in terms of which is the best, I've actually used all except the, the all three except the Ether Dream. Uh, I personally quite like the Beyond. Um, it's very expensive, um, but I do prefer the Beyond FB4 because uh, it gives me a little bit. It's it's very easy to set up, and you can mix and match with Beyond clips and you know, do all your recording out and it's, it's, it's very powerful. Um, the Helios is a good starting one, although apparently the Ether Dream has a little bit less noise. Sometimes the Helios can give you a little bit of flicker when you're moving around the network. I'm not sure if the Ether Dream does as well, but uh, it's kind of something to be aware of. I wouldn't really be using the Helios in a, uh, what's the word, I guess a, a professional setup. I would only use it for learning. That's kind of my take. Other people might disagree, but I, I, I've used it a lot, and it, it's very noisy when you're in the network and, and moving around. So I'm going to start off. I've, I've got the Helios here today, so this is what I'm going to use as my um, my device. So, uh, like I say, it will flicker a little bit um, due to uh, the the um, moving in the network, dropping frames basically makes it flicker. And if you pause the timeline, it completely turns off. So that's a good safety feature to know because lasers are dangerous so let's start off by laying down we'll start off by laying down the laser chop and the laser chop is how we convert our shapes our geometry that we're going to send to the laser into a format that the laser likes understands so these are all ILDA based lasers so we're going to basically be converting to ILDA from geometry and then we're going to send that send that in so the laser chop the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the color tab and I'm going to take the red scale, I'm going to copy that and paste it to the green scale and the blue scale and I'm going to set it to zero. And the reason I'm setting it to zero is I don't want to turn on my laser and have it suddenly full go full blast on a single point or do something stupid uh, and then burn a hole in my, well in my case my sofa which is right below the, the camera or in other people's cases it could be something else. Fabric is you know, flammable, and lasers are very powerful, so be very careful that when you set up your laser, when you turn on, you want to be setting everything to zero to start with. Very good safety point. So secondly, what we're going to do is we're going to lay down the Helios DAC. So the Helios DAC uh, chop is going to allow us to um, send out to our Helios device. There's an Ether Dream one as well. There's a, um, if you're using AVB, there's an audio uh, out. And if you're using Beyond, then you've got the, um, I think it's called Beyond, or it might be called Pangolin. I'm not sure which one it's called. Um, Pangolin, oh, it's Pangolin, so there you go. So there's, there's different uh, chops for all the different devices, depending on which one you use. Um, but the Helios is what we're going to use today. So I've got Helios, choose my device, and I can just turn active off for now, whilst I set up my canvas. So, my canvas is 1.2 meters wide by 0.9 meters high. So what I can do is I can create this in soft space. So with lasers, with projection, we use textures, and we map those textures, sometimes using geometry or uh, SOPs, and we map those textures onto the surfaces that we want to um, texture, basically. That's what we're doing. We're, we're UV mapping a 3D object. We're texturing a 3D object with projection mapping. Now, with lasers, that's actually, it's a bit different because lasers, they want geometry. They want us to send geometry points to the laser. So we can't projection map a laser using the stoner because it only has textures coming in and textures coming out. But we have got something similar. We have actually got a corner pin SOP, which can help us to map our laser to um, the shape that we want. So we'll start off by setting up our canvas. So what I'm going to do is I've created a grid here, and my grid's 3x3. Three three. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is make it 1.2 wide by 0.9 high. And I'm actually going to make it a polygon. So it's, it's the same grid as my other grid. I'm just setting it up outside here so we can 
have everything on the same network. So my grid I'm going to plug into a null and this null is going to be my laser output. So I'm going to call this a laser out and I'm going to drag it onto the laser chop. And you'll see straight away that we start to get all of this information coming in. We get X, Y and R, G, B and then this actually goes out to the Helios stack. So what I'll do is I'll turn the Helios on and you'll probably hear it maybe, I don't know, the noise reduction might cancel it out. But you'll see nothing appears and the reason nothing appears is because my red scale is still at zero and what I'm going to do is I'm going to really slowly bring up my red scale until it just appears. Oh, and there it is, it's just appearing on my output now and it's quite dim, which is what I want. I want it to be quite dim, but I'm still going to turn it off until we get things how we want them. So I'm going to use, to make my canvas, I'm going to use from the palette another tool called Corner Pin Sop. I'm going to drag that in. Now the way the Corner Pin Sop works, so in our stoner, the canvas is set by the resolution of the render. So we know that we're mapping an object that is 1920 by 1080 pixels. With the corner pin sop, it's not quite like that. The corner pin sop takes the bounds of the object you're putting in, which means if I have a sphere here and I have this grid, if I merge those two together, then and my sphere was bigger than my grid. If I'd already mapped my grid with a corner pin sop, it would break the corner pin sop because my sphere has gone outside of the bounds. So I'm going to show how that how that works, but we'll start off by just using it and then we'll we'll go in there. So my grid is going to go plugged get plugged into the corner pin sop. And then I'm going to plug that into the null laser out and I'm going to turn my laser back on. So we can see here there's there's a couple of weird things going on. First of all, why am I not getting my grid? Why am I getting this weird shape? Well, the answer to that is that in the laser chop, there's actually a step size which chooses how we draw our objects. If I bring my step size down, then you'll see that we get a very flickery but correct shape. We then have another option called minimum vertex holes uh, and the maximum vertex hole, which can also help bring that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up. So there you can see I've now got my points and I'm going to bring my vertex holes up as well. And now we get the shape that we want to get. We want to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm good before I bring up bring up any brightness. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start actually corner pinning using the parameters on the corner pin sort. I'm going to start corner pinning this laser. So actually this laser, as much as it looks like it doesn't cover the whole canvas, it actually does. So if I just drag this up, I've set it up earlier to to see. If you want to see your full canvas, I'll show that in a moment. If you want to see your full canvas, you can um, you can send a rectangle as two by two and it'll show your full canvas. Let me just set this laser up. I just want to get this laser off my off any other object but the wall as quickly as possible. And bear, be, be very careful there's no one in front of the laser when you're setting it up um, because especially with the Helios because the Helios can stutter. So like that's that's why I mean about not using it in uh, in an environment that could uh, potentially blind someone, basically. So I'm going to bring my top right corner, I'm just corner pinning this in, as I did with my projection, except this time I've got to do it with the parameters, middle clicking the parameter ladders. Um, the corner pin SOP doesn't have an interface, so there's a splash we just saw. Uh, and So now I have a laser that's mapped to the four points. Um, in fact, let me just see how that looks because I can't see it. Okay, that's looking good. You guys can see that on the camera. That's fine. Lovely. So you can't actually see the flicker as badly as I can, but it's flickering like crazy right now. So one of the reasons it's flickering is probably because I have this way too low. So I'm going to start bringing my brightness back up just so it gets it turns to the right color, which is blue. Uh, so once I'm at 0.045, I've actually got a, a fairly dim but uh, bright laser. Now, you can't probably see it in fact, I'm not sure if you can, but there is a uh, there's these little tags that are coming off the points of my laser, and you'll see them maybe when you're setting your laser up. And the reason that those little tags come, and they normally have like a little red dot on the end, it's um it's where the blanking step size is not quite right. So if you just bring the blanking step size down, 
then that actually can alleviate those little those little issues. It can get rid of those dots. So the problem I've got right now is that uh, you might not be able to see it so well on the on the video, but actually my corner pin, uh, the the middle points and the two bottom points, they don't match at all. In fact, the right hand point doesn't match either. Quite a lot of my points, even though I've corner pinned it with a perspective pin, don't work. And the reason for that is that the laser is not like a projector where you have this linear. Um, it is it, well, other than short ultra short throw projectors, you've got this sort of barrel distortion in the laser, and what that means is that whenever you, if you try to projection map a laser using traditional techniques that you would use for projection mapping, you'll find that they don't actually work. And the reason they don't work, well, unless you're using point by point manipulation, uh, they won't work. And even in point by point manipulation, sometimes if you're trying to do something in between two points, the interpolation will be wrong. So the only way you can really match a laser to a projector is by basically have your projector project a grid and then one by one going through every single dot on the grid and matching that laser. That's the only way that you can do it without some clever barrel distortion shaders and so on. So when you're starting out, this is the easiest way to get it working. It's a little bit labor, laborsome, a bit tired, like you know, a bit tiring, but it will work. That's the main thing. So I now have my corner pin SOP uh, and it's set up to send out this laser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match my other points and because of, there's a bit of a weird thing where if I match my points I could just use a point SOP and a transform, or a, sorry a group SOP and a transform and just group my points and transform them. But then the problem is that anything else I send in will be incorrect because there's no interpolation between those points because we're sending geometry not textures. Textures interpolate between the two points that you warp, geometry won't. And in fact I can show that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle and this is actually going to show also my other issues. If I merge my circle with a grid, my circle is bigger than my grid so watch what happens when I plug that into the corner pin slot. Everything is completely wrong. My grid is no longer correct because my circle goes outside the bounds of the grid. So what I need to do is bring the radius down my circle and you'll see that it fixes itself. So now I've got this circle. So what's interesting here is that if I was to, let's say my central point, if I want to move my central point on my grid, then I can do that. I can just group that point um, and I can go in and just see what that point number is. So I just, I just, right, I just made the viewer active here and I went right click display options and turned on points. And I can see that's point 0.4 by the looks of it. So if I group point 0.4 and then I start to transform that group, Oop, not trail, that's going to break things, transform. So if I transform that uh, group and then I start to move it into place, my circle's not going to move because my circle's merging further down the order. But even if I had this happen after the merge, it's still not going to work. My circle has no idea that it's inside this grid. So if you want to map things perfectly, then you're going to have to come up with a different method. And the way to do that is to, first of all, delete the group and the transform. The way to do that is through a lattice. A lattice will actually interpolate between the points that we put in. So this is our canvas. This grid is our canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lattice into after the merge, so all of our geometry gets merged in and then it goes through this lattice and then it goes through the corner pin. So the corner pin is the first thing we do, but it's not the first thing in the chain. It's actually the last step in the chain. Because we want the lattice with nice coordinates, not with weird warped coordinates. So what I'll do is I'm going to make a box, which is going to be the volume that we use to control our lattice. And I'm going to set it to have divisions, two divisions, which makes it match our 
grid in terms of the number of points. And I'm going to set it at 1.2 by 0.9. Now, if I plug this box into the lattice, then the lattice is going to complain because it wants three divisions. So I need to set it to 2 by 2 by 2. And now we have a box that perfectly fits our grid. So how do we then move all our points here? Well, we can insert a group again. This is the horribly slow way of doing it, but the other way includes a lot of programming and that. So I'm going to show the simple way of doing it. Uh, if I go into display options, turn on my points, I've got 12, 13, 14 is my central point. So I can select those points uh, using numbers, 12, oh, 12, 13, 14, just typing them into the space, and then I can transform that group. Now that group, when I transform that group, it's then going to, it's not just going to warp my point, it's going to warp my sphere. So now my, uh, my circle, sorry. So now my circle is interpolating between those points. So when I bring this up, if I match this to my central point, that's now going to make my circle properly centered, not kind of centered and a little bit to the left. And kind of centered and a little bit to the left is fine if you're just using lasers, but if you're using lasers with projection, then it's not fine. You're going to end up with a situation where the projection is slightly off your, um, your circle. And in fact, we could probably we could probably set that up. So let's actually take this circle and let's put it into our projection. So now we have our circle. Ooh, let's also just make that a, a open up. Okay, so there's our circle in the projection. So if I open that up, so you can see there that things are not matching. Our projection and our laser are not matching and it should be obvious yet yeah, even even on the on the camera there it's pretty obvious as to what's going on so i'm going to just pin in i'm just going to copy this group and transform and hopefully this is not going to crash on me because i'm going to save because it crashed earlier on okay so i'm just going to plug this in uh, and i'm going to group this time i'm going to use points 21 22 23 right and then I'm just going to rename, that's going to be called group 2. And I'm going to make this group 2 as well. So it warps it. And then I'm going to plug that into a null actually. And just make sure that this is chained. So this is actually in the chain. So what I'm doing here is basically adding a second point warp. And I'm going to point warp my grid into place. And you can see as I start to move everything into place, my, my circle is now starting to match my projection. Now, what will be interesting is if I turn this lattice off, it won't match because those points don't don't match up. And if I didn't use a lattice and I just used the groups on the on the grid, uh, the the points, sorry, on the grid, that would not match up because my circle wouldn't know it has to move. So this is now setting up um, for. A nice mapping. So if I just go in, I'm just going to keep adding in the points that I need to warp. Uh, I've got some points here at the bottom. I've got 9, 10, 11 want to move. So I'm going to create this group 3. I'm going to in this group 3. And this is going to be points 9, 10, 11. You can also do it by bounds, but for some reason that's crashing in this version of Touch Designer. So I've, um, I've left that. I'm, I'm doing it by point number. Uh, but if you do it by bounds, you can basically just draw a big box over the area you want to do it in. Uh, so that's good. That's group three. That's going to go to group three. So now I can start warping my bottom points as well. And that's going to pin in. So even despite me moving all of these points, it's not quite matching. And the reason it's not quite matching is because we have lasers are just they need this grid set up. They need to be warped to a proper grid in order to match up. On a small scale, um, they work fine, but on a larger scale, they can be problematic. So I'm just going to start bringing my middle point back and down. And you can see there that the bottom right of this sphere is not matching. So if you want to try and 
you want to try and get it right without having to have millions of points. The lattice does have uh, the option of using points to deform. And then you can choose different models and you can kind of get a match through the different models that you use in the lattice. So I can use this uh, length model and I can just see which interpolation model works. Normally the blin is pretty good, but even the blin you can see there I'm starting to get points moving into the wrong place. So it, it depends on how you want to do this. But that is one way of, of kind of of kind of getting it back together. And then you can use Wival. Uh, sorry, back to lattice if you want to just keep to a lattice and use a grid, a grid lineup system. So what I can do now then is now that uh, this is just kind of as a demonstration because I'm not really I don't really want to go through and do all. If you wanted to just map the circle, then obviously you can now use this to just map your circle. Or if you wanted to, you could actually just draw the circle on the projection if you're using. Um, something like um, something like uh, Mad Mapper and you want to just draw things on. So if you want to draw things on, that becomes a lot easier. So I'll quickly go through the drawing. Uh, drawing wise, you basically just want to take this circle, send it into the um, into the null output. But you'll see there it hasn't gone through our corner pins. So what we could do is we could actually let me do our corner pin. We can then just use transforms on our circle before it goes into the merge. And we can start actually matching our circle to the projection manually. So if you're doing like a really simple set where you just need, oh look, my circle wants to match my projection circle, then we can we can match it like that. So I hope that's kind of a it's a bit of a head spinner, but I hope that's kind of an, an overview of how you might get lasers to to map in. Um, obviously, there are things like camera calibration and so on. If um, at the moment, there is no laser calibration, and I've looked into using CamSnapper to do that for 3D objects. But uh, no, I've had no success yet because of all of this distortion. Um, and the distortion is not, it's not just a barrel distortion because it's a single laser point line. So it kind of, depending on which angle the laser's at, you'll get a different distortion. So it's quite, um, it, it's definitely doable. Uh, in fact, I've seen people do it before, but if you're just drawing things, it's a lot easier. So just bear that in mind. If you want to play with lasers, doing 3D mapping is a lot harder than doing um, a standard sort of match the circle kind of setup. So when you're doing that setup as well, actually, it's worth mentioning that this grid uh, is still in our laser. So if we wanted to map it and then not have the grid in, if I just remove the grid, it's going to break everything because my grid has changed the bounds. So what I want to do is I want to basically group the grid primitives and just call this canvas. And then after my corner pin sop, I can put in a delete sop. And my delete sop is going to let me uh, delete, hang on a minute. I didn't create group by pattern. Yep. So now delete sop is going to let me delete that canvas. And now I just get a lovely circle over my previous circle. So there are other things that we can do. So if we want to match up a laser um, to a projection, there is another, there's another problem, uh, which is that uh, lasers don't, lasers are slow compared to pixels sending out on the graphics card. So if I just make carve here, and I'm just going to animate that carve. And that's going to be on my projection. If I turn off my grid, and actually I need to turn off my laser so you can see this. There you go. So now I've got a carved, a line on my projection of basically just circles. It's very simple, um, but it's mapped in and it's circling, so that's nice. So what I want to do is I want to put a laser point at the head of that line. I want that line to have a laser attached to it. So what I can do is I've basically got this this point that's going around and you can see here that point zero is my second UV so actually maybe we do it the other way around just to kind of show it easier in an easier way. Uh, I don't even know if this will work. No, well, point zero is always the static point and then the other point is kind of added up. So what we can do is we can actually use a sort on that circle 
and then we can we want this first point not the second one so what I can do is I use my sort and I can say reverse and now when I look at my point number now point zero is my leading point on my line so in order to use that point I can then use a delete sort and I can say delete non-selected points and I want to delete every point except point zero and now we get a single, if I, if I turn it on, now we get a single point that flies around and this is going to be our laser point. Now I'm going to send this out of the geometry. I'm going to send it up to the merge, right? Because that should work, that should map, map in. I'm going to turn my laser on. But what I will do is I'll get rid of this sphere first. There we go. So I'm going to turn my laser on. And look, there's nothing. So the reason there's nothing is because lasers don't work with just points. There has to be a line. So an easy way to create a line on this is to create a circle. Uh, where's my circle? And I'm going to make my circle really, 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 really small. Very, very small. It's like 0.01. And I'm also going to say divisions. I only want three divisions because I don't want to send the laser too many points because then it has to think about all those points. I just want to send as little as possible. I could probably even send two might even work. Uh, so if I just copy this, I'm going to copy this circle onto this point. And then I'm going to send that out. And now my output has a lovely little circle going around at the same speed as the projection. So when I bring my radius down even more, you'll just get a single point. And if I bring divisions to two, it still works actually. So yeah, divisions two is perfect. So now I've got a point that circles. Well, that's all very good. But what happens when I then decide I want to turn my projection on? So let's open my projection. And my projection isn't opening for a moment because I'm not rendering it. That's why. So let's render it. So now you'll see there's a bit of a problem here. Our projection is really far ahead of our laser. It's complete, The laser takes so long to... And Helios does have... Um, it has this uh, Q-time. So if I bring the Q-time down, you can see we're going to get our laser closer. But it starts to flicker. It gets very flickery. So what I can do is I can leave that at 0.2. Rather than slowing down the laser, what we want to do really is delay our projection. And the way to do that is to use a cache. And we're just going to say we've got 32 frames by default and we're active, so it's just going to fill the cache. And then we can use a cache select. Oh, not that, a cache select. And this is going to allow us to choose which frame we want to get out. And what we can do is we can just plug that in. Oh, and look, 13 frames is actually quite good. So I can just choose, go back and forward and figure out which point matches. It says here it's basically like 10 frames, maybe nine frames. So that looks good. Now I've got this point and I've got my projection following the point. So that's quite cool. So now anything that we do with our... Um, with our SOPs will now match up to that projection. In fact, it's still, my projection's still sometimes getting a little bit ahead. I'm going to make it like maybe... Because the laser's so bright, you can usually get away with um, having your, your projection a little bit behind because people just can't see it because it's so bright, that, that area around, around the laser. So because I've mapped all this now, I should be able to put some text on here as well. So I should be able like, to put some text saying, I don't know, uh, maybe I'll just write stay home. And this is going to show another um, another thing. Oh, not stop. I'm in the wrong thing. I need to stop. This is going to show another issue with, with lasers. Um, so let's write stay home since we're in the middle of a crisis. Why not? Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform it because when I merge this in, everything's going to go a little bit crazy. As you can see, doesn't like that at all. So I'm going to bring this down, and you can see it's it's not drawing 
this text because this text is so heavy um, it's not it doesn't want to draw it so I'm just gonna make it 0.1.1.1 hang on helps if I can write and I'm just gonna bring it into my canvas because at the moment it's not in my canvas so there you can see it's now in the canvas but you can see it's trying to draw that entire shape with all these lines inside so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm going to make it uh, not triangles, going to make it open polygons, which is then going to draw it a little bit nicer. And you can start to see it flickering into life. But when we have lots of points, our laser doesn't like sending these step sizes so much. So if I bring my step size up, and I can also bring my minimum vertex down, then we're going to get better. If I can keep my step size down, actually, I just bring my minimum vertex holes. And that's going to give us some solid text that says something like stay home. So that's another thing to bear in mind is that your, your, your minimum vertex hold is going to control how that works. But then look at my little point that I had before. My point was so nice and now it's really tiny and a bit rubbish. So we want to kind of balance that in your laser. Sometimes you might want to use multiple lasers if you want to have text and then things flying around. You want, might want to use two lasers so that you're not getting this horrible refresh rate issue. So yeah, so that, that's, that's that anyway. Uh, what else can I show? I've got this other issue where... Oh yeah, color. Sorry, color. Uh, I, can, I can create color by using the point stop. So at the moment, my laser is white. I can go to add color and change it to red. And we've got red, stay home, green. I can change it to, well, any color I want, really. I mean, I can just flick through the spectrum. Obviously, it's not very good right now. I'm quite dim, so let's turn the brightness up so we get a little bit more. And I'm not going to tell you, I, I'm scared because my, uh, my, this is a very reflective surface that I'm projecting onto. I'm projecting from below, but even so, it's just best to not go too bright. So there you go. I can change the color of stay home, and that all works nicely. And then if I want to, you know, if I want to have my my circle, because everything's now coming from this single circle, if I want to, you know, start doing some 3D transformations, I could actually just start rotating this. So I just type in me dot time dot abs seconds times, I don't know, 90, and then just copy that to the other axes. Now I've got a 3D object that's kind of rotating around. But you can see again my projection is now not matching my laser because I have these different shapes doing different things and things start to get complicated and you'll, you have to start tweaking your, your, um, your setup. So actually now maybe I can come forward or I'm going to come back. Who knows? I need to come back. There we go. But it's just not matching. Yeah. If I get rid of the stay home it probably matches. If I just disconnect that. Yeah, now it's much smoother, a lot more steady. So you have to be kind of careful about how you, you know, match these things up. And interestingly, now it's really, really far out. That's better. Yeah, so it's starting to come back now. Yeah, it's at ten frame. Ten frames seems to be good. So yeah, so that's. Um... That's kind of an overview of, of everything in terms of shapes. Your main sops for, for creating creating things, you've got, uh, if I just disconnect this, your main sops for creation, and turn off my window, are your, um, you've got your circle sop um, for doing your circles. If I, oh, too big. There you go. You've got your circle soft for doing a circle. You can see there that it's uh, it's not quite matching up. If I make it a NURBS curve, it's going to be a bit closer. But if I then change my laser settings, my step size, so the step size is going to affect this. Oh, there we go. And also my uh, minimum vertex hold is going to help there. So yeah, so we can have circles. If we want to do like trace lines, we can use a carve. Uh, we can animate that carve using these parameters. We can use a, a line would also uh, allow you to, to carve along it. There you go, so I can carve along lines. Pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, so any of, the, any of the shape. I mean, you can actually use a sphere as well. So if I use a sphere, 
and just merge that in. Uh, it's going to be massive. Uh, make a polygonal sphere. I'm going to make it a lot smaller. And you can see there we've got a sphere and it's kind of it's kind of cool, but it's it's flickering a lot. So if I want to make it flicker less, then obviously again the minimum vertex hold can change and the step size can change. Um, but more than anything, the number of points. Bring the frequency down. Suddenly my sphere is a lot easier to see. If I transform, it rotates. So if I, you know, I'll just use a, another method for transforming easily. Just to use a beat and a math. And set your math from a range of 0 to 1, 0 to 360. And then I can plug that into my rotate and we get a nice rotation on the sphere. So we can rotate the sphere around as well. And even if we want, we can we can carve that sphere. So most of the tracing stuff is done through carves. Uh, carves are the best way of doing it. Um, so that's now going to draw the shapes in as you want them to draw in. And if you want them to be just points, then you can actually, there's a trick where you can use the carve and set it really small. Oh, hang on. And now I've got my points. And then if I send this into my uh, geometry for my projection, if I make an in. Sorry, this, I'm going quite fast now, I realize that, but I'm just talking through things. Then you're going to get some pretty cool, and I'll put the projection on. Separate window. You're going to get like a, a sort of point around that sphere. Again, it's a little bit out with the cache select because I haven't mapped it properly. But it, it would be if you if you take the time, uh, then you can definitely get it spot on. So there you go. So there's a nice projection of a, a sphere doing some stuff. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it for now. I think in terms of what I'm going to show. So thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, put them in comments, and I can go through and uh, we can see, uh, see how we can help out. So thanks a lot.